Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a baked kaleidoscope. For this project, you want to start by centering your shirt using the sleeve inside the other sleeve technique. So I'm using a washable marker to mark out my center points. Then I'm going to tuck one sleeve inside the other sleeve, line up the seams along the underarm, along the shoulder, along the side seams, and then I'm going to smooth out all of the wrinkles. By centering your shirt, you're going to create symmetry in your project. So the back of the shirt will all be uniform, the front of the shirt will all look uniform, kind of like a mirror image. If you're brand new to tie dyeing, centering the shirt can be the hardest step of the entire process. I don't do it very often, so it always takes me a few extra minutes. But this is the foundation of your tie dye. So if you make sure to get your centering done correctly, the end results usually will look really nice and everything will line up. So flat against the table is the back of the shirt, and I just folded the top over top of the back of the shirt and now I'm smoothing out the wrinkles. It takes some practice, but once you do it a handful of times, it gets a lot easier to do. Now decide where you want the center of your pattern to be. And I like to come down a couple, two, three inches from the underarm. You don't wanna have your center right on top of the collar. Obviously that's too high. And you don't wanna to go too low to where it's on the belly button. I just don't think that's a good look. Now I'm going to airplane fold the project and I'm using my yardstick just to help me create a nice straight edge. You don't wanna have a bunch of wrinkles up underneath your folds. Now flip the project over and repeat the process. So I'm going to airplane fold it back once, airplane fold it back again, and if you've done it correctly, you'll have multiple folds on one side and only two on the other. Once I have the airplane folds all lined up, all the wrinkles are smoothed out, it's time to do the final pleating. So you can call this an accordion fold. A lot of times I refer to it as an S pattern. It doesn't really matter what you call it. You just wanna do it like this. And when you get to the sleeve area, there's like just sort of random flaps of fabric. Just fold them up and incorporate it in. So while I was doing this, I was deciding how am I going to dye it up? Am I going to do dye under ice, dye over ice? And I'm making this shirt for my sister who's going to Hawaii and I'm running out of time. So I decided I think I'll do an ice dye and I'll stick it in the oven to speed things up. So normally I secure my projects by using rubber bands but I was concerned about sticking it in the oven with rubber bands because when you apply heat to rubber bands, they snap and they break. So I decided that I'm going to secure it by using kite string. And I do have links down below for the kite string and the rubber bands and everything else that I use for tie dye. So go ahead and check that out. Don't forget from now until Halloween, 1031 of 2022, you can get 10% off your order over at www.boredomwithgen.com if you use the coupon code BELLADONNA. So if you want to get one of those sinew pullers and matching caddy sets and get a discount, head on over right away before the coupon expires. Now that I have it all wrapped up and secure, I'm just going to tie it off by using a simple double knot. Now it's time to create some type of an ice barrier and get everything set up. 
So the red thing is my silicone cake mold. I just rolled it up into a little ball. That's just gonna help prop up the project. And I'm using tin foil as my ice barrier. And I'm creating a nice tall ice barrier, like several inches tall, three inches. That way it can really fill it up with ice. And the container is a Corningware bowl. Those are made to go in the oven. So everything is heat safe so nothing's going to catch on fire. And the foil, I cut it away because I wanted to make sure that there was nothing on the bottom. Even though this is going to be a muck dye, I wanted the water to be able to flow all the way through the shirt and then down into the pan. Now it's time for the fun part, we get to add the dye. So I'm just going to add little stripes of color and my sister's favorite colors are purple and green. So I'm going to make a purple and green kaleidoscope. I think plum is my favorite of all the purples. I use it a lot. And then granny apple is a color that I rarely ever use. I completely forget about it. So the thing with kaleidoscopes is you never know really what you're gonna get when you open it up. So I thought I would just add to the fun, add a color that I rarely ever use, and we'll see what happens. Next I give the project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure and I add my ice. And for this one, I'm using my Pribcho ice. There is no rhyme or reason. Whatever ice you have, you can use it. And from here, this is where it's going to get interesting. I'm going to take it over to the oven. Don't judge, the inside of the oven is disgusting. I was not planning on doing this baked dye, um, otherwise I would have cleaned out the oven. I cook a lot of those $12 Tuesday Papa Murphy pizzas and I think all the pepperoni grease just makes things nasty in there. But I digress. So I preheated the oven to 200 degrees and then I set the timer for 30 minutes. I wanted to see how long it was going to take for the ice to melt and it took a really long time. The project was probably in there for about three hours and make sure that you do not leave the project. So like don't run errands while you're baking your tie dye. You want to be there in case something goes wrong. So after the three hours, I brought it back to the table. I added another layer of dye. I just wanted to make sure that there was enough dye to get really good saturation. Added more soda ash, added more ice, and back in the oven it went for another three hours. Once all the ice had melted, I turned the oven off and I just let it sit there overnight. So the oven really didn't do anything to the project other than just speed up the melting ice process so I was able to get it done quicker. As I mentioned before, I turned the oven off and I just left the project sitting in there for about 18 hours. So I was crossing my fingers and hoping that the oven was enough heat to where I could pull it before the 24 hours. But please hear me, you guys. The oven was turned off for 18 hours, okay? So for the rinse out, you wanna start by using cold water. That's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric, and then increase your water up too hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I like to do hot water cycles using Kirilon. That's a professional textile detergent. And then I like to do a final hot water cycle using Milsoft, and Milsoft is a professional fabric softener. And then I'll put it in the dryer and I'll iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our baked kaleidoscope after it's been washed and dried. And I think it turned out really beautiful. These are so much fun to make. Like I mentioned before, you don't really know exactly what you're going to get. You have a rough idea that it's going to look something like this, 
but you don't know how your colors are going to split or where they're going to split. And that inner green circle that's surrounding the center, totally unexpected. I have no idea why that happened and I wasn't planning on it, but I think it's pretty cool looking. It just gives it extra dimension. And look at how many colors I've achieved out of just using plum and granny apple. Like, how fun is that? I really do enjoy making these. So overall, I'm very pleased with the way it turned out. My sister snatched this one up, which makes me very happy because you know, when you make things for other people, um, they don't necessarily always love things the way that I do, but she likes this one a lot, so that makes me happy. So what do you guys think? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing! Oh, 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 oh,